PaintShop Pro is an easy-to-use bitmap editing application that has many, many features for amateur and professional photographers alike. In this tutorial, we'll look at a number of different ways in which you can remove objects from a photograph to enhance the image. We'll cover Scratch Remover, Background Eraser, Clone Tool, The Blemish Fixer, Magic Fill, and Smart Carver. I'm going to start with this image and as you can see there is a fair amount of work to do on this image but with the tools in PaintShop Pro we can do it in quick order. I'm going to start with the clone tool. The clone tool is a popular tool in many photo editing applications and does quite well at covering objects or areas with something else from the same image. As an example if I select the clone tool in my toolbox I'll zoom into this area here. You'll notice that I have a small circle with what looks like a rubber stamp. By right mouse clicking I can select my source area and then when I left click I'll create my target and it's going to take the content of the source area and move it into the target. So left click and it's just simply a matter of painting. If I need to reset my source area I'll simply move my cursor someplace else, right click and then left click to continue painting. If by chance I make a mistake, it's simply a matter of doing a control Z to undo. Now I can also hold the Alt key down and this will allow me to change the size of my nib if I left click and drag my mouse with the Alt key held down. I'm going to make my mouse a little bit smaller, my cursor a little bit smaller, and again right click for my source and then left click to fill that in. I'm going to select my source up here, left click and start to fill this in. I'm going to continue removing these lines and then I'll be right back and we'll show another feature within the application called Scratch Remover. Okay, we're going to switch to the Scratch Remover tool. Now the Scratch Remover tool was designed to remove scratches from damaged images, but it's also very effective at removing things like power lines, telephone poles, or pipes that are distracting in the image. I'll select the Scratch Remover tool Underneath the Clone tool we have the Scratch Remover and it works similarly to the Clone tool in that if I left click and drag you can see that I have two outside lanes and a center lane. Now the way this works is it takes the source area as the two outside lanes and dumps it into the target area which is my center lane. So simply a matter of left clicking and dragging and very quickly remove the line for me. Now I can select this area along here. If I use my page up and my page down key, that will allow me to change the width of these lanes. Very quick and very easy. And it's simply a matter of dragging along the line that I want to remove. And that's all there is to it. So again, I'm going to finish up removing these scratches and we'll be right back to take a look at the background eraser tool. Okay, we're back. Now we're going to take a look at the background eraser. The background eraser tool lets you selectively erase pixels. I'll select the background eraser tool. Underneath the eraser tool itself, we'll find the background eraser. Erase the background simply by holding down your left mouse button and dragging around the area that I want to erase. You'll note that the black tip will erase whatever it touches. For example, if I move my cursor inwards to the edge of the roof, the black tip will touch that and erase it. I'm just going to do a control Z. Now it's a good idea to let go of the mouse button once in a while so that if you do make a mistake, when you do a control Z or an undo, it doesn't undo too much work. To get in this area, I'm simply left clicking and it will easily remove content from here. So as you can see, background eraser, very quick and very easy to do. Now I'm going to replace this background with another image. On the right hand side, I'm going to mouse over top of my layers palette. That will cause it to slide out and I'm just going to push this pin in that will lock it into place. In my organizer tray at the bottom, I'm going to drag this image, left click, bring it up into my layers palette, and I'll let the mouse button go. You'll see it's quite a bit smaller. That's not a problem at all. I'm going to position this in the bottom left hand corner. 
I'll stretch it upwards and now it's simply a matter of taking the image of the house and moving it ahead of the cloud image that will then effectively replace the background I can see a couple of areas that I've missed here easy enough I'm simply going to grab my eraser tool and I can erase these objects quite easily and that's all there is to it next we're going to take a look at the blemish fixer now you would think the blemish fixer is good for removing blemishes. Well it is, but it's also good for removing small areas or imperfections in an image. I'm going to open up this image and I'm going to select the makeover tools. Now the makeover tools consist of blemish fixer, toothbrush, eye whitener, suntan, and thinify. I'm going to be using the blemish fixer. I'm going to zoom in to this area here. You'll note my cursor is a larger circle with a smaller in the center. This works very similar to the scratch remover in that whatever is in the outside channel will be dumped into the inside channel. Again with the blemish fixer as with the scratch remover I can hold the alt key down and change the size of my brush. Simply click and it will remove the object. For this object I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and it's simply a matter of clicking in here and very easy it's removed that element for me make it a little bit smaller and as you can see I can very quickly go around the image and remove the elements that I don't want. I'll zoom out a little bit make this one a little bit bigger and there you have it very quick very easy and that's all there is to it On the next image, I'm going to use the Magic Fill. This is one very powerful tool that's also very quick and easy to use. I'll mask the area that I want to remove and simply click on my action icon upper left on the toolbar. In a matter of seconds, it's going to take the clownfish, remove it from the area and backfill with the texture in behind. I'll do a control D to remove my mask and there we have it. Very quick and very easy. I'm going to do the same effect on another image. Now I can use the rectangular mask tool or I can use the freehand selection mask. I'm going to select the freehand selection mask and very quick and very easy just draw a mask around my subject and click on the action tool and we're done. Control D will remove that mask and that's all there is to it. In this final image we're going to use the Smart Carver to remove a person. From the image menu I'm going to go down to Smart Carver and I'll click on this and you'll see I have what's called a Getting Started Palette. Now there's a number of these in Paint Shop Pro and they basically give you a one two three approach on how to use a specific tool. I'll simply click on Close with my brush selected I'll simply paint over my subject. Very quick and very easy making sure to get all of the elements that I want to remove from the image and anytime there's a portion of the image that's close to an object that I don't want to remove I'm going to use this brush my preserved paint brush and mask an area to protect. Simple as that I'm going to click on auto contract horizontally it's done that for me. I'm going to set my new dimension back to 576. Hit enter. It returns me back into Paint Shop Pro with the object removed from the image. That's all there is to it. As you can see, there are a number of tools available in Paint Shop Pro that make it easy to remove objects, backgrounds, or imperfections and fix up your photos. You might want to add some cool effects to your own images. Check out some of the tutorials at learn.corel.com. Also, check the Tools You Need section for some cool scripts that can be used in Paint Shop Pro. So, take a look at your images. Use some of the things that you've learned here today, and happy creating.